So, uh, in the last class, we discussed about the uh, representation of the AC parameters, voltage, current, or some, uh, or of that type, which are time varying in nature. So that we can represent here them by let's say some uh, XT. Sine of omega t. Now the same thing. This can be cosine of omega t also. So it does not matter whether uh, someone is calling that sine omega t, someone is calling that sine omega t. Someone may also write the same thing as. Oops. Theta, because it may happen that for someone the star zero starts at a point where the angle is theta. Okay. So all these are same thing. Okay. Now uh, of course there that means there is no absolute uh, big that is because there is no absolute time. Now let's consider uh, what happens. We have multiple such sine waves or let's say the uh, sinusoidal parameters or AC parameters. AC quantities rather, so not parameters. Okay. So let's consider that. <coughs> in that case, we would have a line, a timeline. This. Let me write this as omega t. So, So let's say we have two quantities, x1 and xt, x2. Okay. So now, as you can see, if someone calls or someone uh, considers that x1 has a representation that is root two, let's say RMS value of x1 sine of omega t. So in that case, this should be if this is the representation, this should be x2 sine of omega t minus let's say if this is theta i don't know why there is a dot always uh, one second
handling the point. Okay. So uh, this should be minus theta. Now, some, if someone calls that this is, uh, let's say someone considers that this is a sine omega t simply, let's say someone considers that this is sine omega t. So in that case, this should be represented. by plus theta this way okay so that means or uh, the uh, the basic thing is that or uh, uh, the issue is that uh, of course here we are considering two sinusoidal quantities and for this comparison of whether that uh, the, the phase angle difference is omega plus theta or minus theta or whatever for them the frequencies must be same and if the frequencies are not same, so in that case, this uh, relationship consideration and all these remains completely uh, invalid or uh, there would be no point. Of course, so uh, while we are considering multiple such sinusoidal quantities, we are considering that uh, the basic assumption is that, uh, not an assumption, basic consideration is that the, the frequency of all the sinusoidal quantities are same. Now, why uh, this, uh, I would say, uh, why do we consider this particular case? If the frequencies are not same, so you can easily find that uh, at any instant of time or even uh, after, uh, let's say, from one cycle to another cycle, the phase angle difference would not remain same. The phase angle difference at any instant of time, in fact, that is, all, uh, that is changing, uh, that the value is always changing. Moreover, uh, if you consider the, let's say, an uh, uh, electrical or even, let's say, the, if you consider uh, 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 a system, uh, what is a system? I'm not going into that. You just consider a basic thing, whatever you consider, that the, if you apply a certain, uh, uh, let's say, force or let's say that is called excitation, in that case, you would have some, some sort of response. So if you plot the response or uh, if you find the relationship between the uh, application of the uh, apply excitation and the response, so you would see that the frequencies of them would be same. Now, it may happen that the frequencies would be uh, different for certain duration, for certain duration in the sense that uh, there may be, uh, let's say, uh, transient case where the frequencies may look a little bit different. However, finally, they would be same. At steady state, they should usually be same. So, and moreover, for us, uh, for our for the uh, part or for the chapters we are discussing here, the uh, let's say if you apply a voltage across any element, we would see that the frequency of the current uh, that would be uh, same as that of the applied voltage. Or if you apply a, if you pass a current through any element, and the uh, the uh, the voltage across the element would have the same frequency as that of the current. And this is of course valid for the uh, for the elements we would discuss in this class, mostly the passive elements and uh, that can be uh, a few uh, motor generators also. Okay. So that means, uh, as you can see, if we consider the timeline, X1 achieves similar phase at an earlier instant of time compared to X2. Now, what is similar phase? Similar phase can be anything. Let's say you can consider the zero, zero value, let's say this value. So uh, X1 achieves zero at uh, an earlier instant of time compared to the zero of X2. You can consider, let's say, peak, a positive peak. So X1 achieves positive peak at an earlier instant of time. You can consider, let's say, 30 degree of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, or let's say some, uh, 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 a per unit value of let's say one by root two per unit value of something like that. So uh, in that case, that uh, x one achieves similar phase or similar uh, 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 value at an earlier instant of time compared to x two. Now considering any other phase or any other uh, value that is uh, or uh, condition that is difficult to find or usually sometimes that makes uh, like makes. Uh, make things a little bit ambiguous if you consider let's say the zeros so in that case you have to consider the uh, the zero when the, neg the the quantity goes from negative to positive or there are there is another zero where the quantity goes from positive to negative so you should be uh, you should be cautious while considering that whether uh, you should check whether the, the situation or the phase of the two quantities 
same phase means that uh, both quantities going from negative to positive uh, uh, through the zero. So this way you should check. Otherwise, it would be easier if you consider the positive uh, peak or negative peak. Uh, and usually you do that, that we find which one achieves the positive peak at an earlier instant of time compared to the negative peak. Now, this is not very difficult to find. You can find uh, this by the phase angle difference by using an oscilloscope, where you first uh, need to determine which one is achieving uh, the same phase at an earlier instant of time. Now, to uh, con uh, compare the phase difference, you should go for check for uh, the zero crossing. Zero crossing means the positive uh, uh, zero uh, from negative to positive going zero or the positive to negative going zero. However, nowadays, but today's oscilloscope, the digital storage oscilloscope, has some features called, uh, called cursor by using which you can uh, determine what the zero point very easily without calculating things that whether this is zero or not finding from the oscilloscope screen. So, uh, so it's easier. Now, as X1, uh, to, uh, to give some uh, time relationship between these two, as X1 achieves the same phase at an earlier instant of time, we would call X1 is leading X2. So, we would call with respect to this situation, X1 leading X2. Or we can say the same thing in a different way. And the way is X2 lagging X1. Okay. So uh, this is the way to tell. Uh, and by what angle? by theta and here also by theta. So now if you know the uh, frequency relation, frequency of that, so you can easily write down the, uh, uh, the X1 expression of X1 and X2. Of course, you need the RMS value of that also. Okay. So this way you can uh, uh, completely define the relationship or completely define the mathematical relationship of X1 and X2 and their phase angle relationship also. Okay. Uh, so uh, I hope you got my point. Now, if you have any question here, you please ask me. So now the problem with this sort of representation writing uh, sine every time, uh, this way x1 uh, is uh, represented by the sine function, mathematical sine function like this. So this is a bit tedious and for the, uh, the other representation of drawing sine wave on uh, every drop of hat, that would be uh, another difficult to also and finding that because there are so many points finding the phase angle and phase angle difference, finding the peak, everything would be a little bit tedious. So uh, we lose uh, in a different way for the graphical representation. For the mathematical representation, we would, do, uh, we would find uh, the other method or uh, re uh, I would say similar method also. Now, this graphical representation is always required because uh, representing something graphically is uh, uh, better or easy to eye and easy to follow most of the times. Okay. But, uh, otherwise, of course, uh, mathematical representation also equally valid and equally required. Now, for this, let's consider that uh, Let's consider a line simply. So now this line would be rotated in the anti-clockwise direction. Now you can see find here that uh, you can find here that if this is rotated in the anti-clockwise direction, this would create a circle like this. Okay, so a complete rotation would form a complete cycle. Now, at any instant of time, you go on plotting, let's say the uh, anything y core y axis value or x axis value, anything. So uh, when that is, let's say, uh, let's take an example. When that is the line is here, let's say uh, we have the y axis value something like this and the x axis value something like this. Now you can see that as you are, and this angle is defined by this omega into t. Okay. 
we are uh, rotating the line at a constant uh, speed or constant frequency and with respect to time that makes an angle so now you can uh, it, let's try to you can plot either the y axis value or the x axis value here if you plot that you can uh, if some of you uh, have already got the point that this should form okay, both of them would form a sine wave like this so of course one would be 90 degree phase shifted from the another otherwise the the the, the peak value of this uh, that this would be equal to the length of the length of the line and uh, of course the frequency would be same as the uh, omega that is omega equals to here once again omega equals to twice pi into f that is the radial frequency so the frequency of this sine wave would be equal to the ra rotational frequency of this line okay now uh, this thing uh, now a, a small issue here is that if you consider simply this line you don't you cannot we cannot say which point is fixed and which point is moving so to circumvent that we put an arrow mark uh, at the moving end of the line so this is the complete uh, representation of the line that is rotating and as that rotates that would form a sine wave so this rotating line can be considered a representation a simple representation of a sine wave also so this thing is called phasor notation so uh, or simply called the called a phasor diagram now as you can see here uh, i would go into what why that is required that is too abstract everything i will answer just wait a little bit if, if the uh, uh, if your confusion is not clarified then you, you are free to ask so uh, so this is called phasor diagram now uh, So uh, this rotating line uh, is called a phasor, uh, and uh, this can represent a sine wave. Now another issue is that if you look here, uh, I didn't. Of course, I told you about about x-axis and y-axis. However, I should have used the the vertical part and the horizontal part this way. Otherwise, uh, as you can see, there I did not draw anything any x-axis and y-axis here. only thing if you of course you can say that i have started with the line once uh, i have drawn the line to be horizontal however that does not make any difference if you consider if you have started with let's say uh, just to give you an example if you have started with the line let's say from here the the uh, when that line is rotated of course that would generate a sine wave only issue is that the 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 starting angle or starting point of that would not be a zero a uh, zero degree angle or the start the, that would not uh, that point would not be here starting point would not be here starting point may be let's say something like here okay. uh so however you, as you we, you have already seen that uh, this does not make any difference for me the starting uh, if we are looking uh, for me the time has started from here that t equals to 0 from someone else the time may start at this t equal t2 equals to 0 so in that case the representation would be little different or look little different however they are actually same okay so if you consider all your time for time for all your quantities have started at t2 equals to 0 so your representation and my representation would not, be, would not at all be different so you representing the same sine wave or same phasor by considering that let's say the line is the line has started from here that does not make any difference as such only thing is that you have to keep the length of the line if you consider here this is proportional to the or this is usually considered equal to the length of the line so the length of the line should be same okay so this length and this length should must be same otherwise the, there is nothing no uh, uh, difference in between on one again however here that this should be rotated the frequency of rotation should be uh, same that means frequency of rotation should be omega 
Now, is, uh, this is not the complete representation. Complete representation in the sense because we have seen that the sine, uh, sine wave or AC wave forms are represented by their RMS values uh, uh, compact for compact representation. So this length should be proportional because uh, it may happen we would see or not. It is uh, usually happen. It will usually happen that there will be multiple such phasors drawn in the same phasor diagram. To represent their relationship, their, uh, we would see that their addition, subtraction, we would, do, we would be able to do that. So, uh, uh, one so this line should be proportional to the length of the uh, or the RMS value of the sinusoidal term you are trying to represent, and for the you should write the uh, peak value. Uh, sorry, RMS value of the sine wave. Let's say here if you consider the earlier case, let's say x1, this you should write this way that the length or RMS value of this is x1. So this forms the complete phasor representation. So phasor representation for only one sine wave is you can draw the line in any direction. However, the length, the, this should have a tail here. Tail, you don't need anything to represent. Uh, head should be represented by putting an arrow mark over there and the length of this should be proportional to the uh, to the RMS value and moreover the RMS value of the quantity should be written anywhere over the arrow or at the uh, top of the arrow or anywhere uh, it's, it's convenient to represent. Now you would ask me why we are, uh, first thing is that we are writing or we are making the length proportional to the RMS value and further we are writing the RMS value here. Uh, what is the requirement? Of course, the, uh, while we uh, consider the length to be proportional to the RMS value, that's the, uh, that we would go on discussing. The uh, writing the RMS value is not always mandatory. However, this makes our life uh, a little easier uh, if you just uh, write the RMS value also. Okay. So, now, the phasor diagram was, of course, once again, if you just draw a line this way and considering that your another line of you drawing another line, let's say in this direction of, let's say, similar length and further, if you consider that the length of the representation once again of this and you write here this as x1, that does not make any difference. So what is the point in drawing the line this way, of course? Uh, okay, so uh, before drawing, before going into, uh, once again, I let me repeat here the same thing and its implication that there is no x and y axis. Now, what is the uh, what is the problem with that? If you draw an x and y axis, if you draw an, why do we draw an x and y axis? Let's say for the, uh, of course, for the vector. Uh, if you look here, the representation is very similar to a vector. It has a tail and the head of the head of the line, the uh, tip of the line is represented by the arrow and further we have the length of the line uh, propor is proportional to the value of the, let's say, uh, for a vector that is proportional to the value of the vector uh, or here also this is proportional to the value of the quantity. So in, the, in several ways this is very similar to a vector. <coughs> now what is the point here or uh, uh, what is the difference here? Difference is that if you consider a vector that is defined in space. So now in space, uh, you first have to locate the x and y axis. Otherwise, your definition and someone else's definition would be of the definition of the vector would be completely different. However, in case of the phasor, uh, if you see here, this representation represents a sinusoidal waveform. So there is no such absolute thing called axis because if, uh, for a sinusoidal waveform, there is no such thing called axis. Axis, of course, we draw two axes here because we want to represent the, the value of the quantity at any instant of time and the horizontal axis is the time. So that we, and here the horizontal axis, the time, of course, that, uh, that uh, move always moves forward. So if we uh, rotate that in uh, anti-clockwise direction, that is the positive, uh, uh, positive uh, sense of represent, uh, sense of rotation. So that means 
uh, you draw, uh, we don't actually, and you're uh, drawing the same phasor at, an, at a different instant of time does not make any difference to the representation of the phasor. So that means uh, here, uh, you cannot define something uh, by using an X, X and Y axis, you cannot define some uh, initial value of the time. You're just drawing a phasor at any, uh, let's say, uh, anywhere different from my definition or my drawing, that means your time and my time has started at, an, at a different instant. That's all. Otherwise, your definition and my definition, you drawing the, let's say, black line to represent the sinusoidal waveform and me drawing the red line to represent the same sinusoidal waveform, that does not make any difference. So, uh, for, while drawing a phasor diagram, you should never draw a X and Y axis because there is no definition of space. There is The space is not at all involved here. The, 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 the variable or the independent variable which is involved here is the time. So, uh, and... That is already taken into account once you draw, once you consider the rotation because that is proportional to the, the angle created with respect to, let's say, the horizontal or the abscissa and ordinate. That calculation, uh, for the angle required for that calculation, that is already, uh, that already takes into account the time. Now, if you have any confusion up to that, this we will discuss. Otherwise, uh, I am going to discuss why the what is the requirement for drawing a line and considering that to be that to represent a sinusoidal wave. So usually that is required because uh, if we want to represent something that mainly the relationship between between let's say a number of phasors or we have we require some sort of uh, calculation that means mainly the addition subtraction of the phasors. Why do we require addition subtraction of the phasors or this sort of sinusoidal quantities? In your high secondary classes, you have already done that. Uh, given uh, you have to add two sinusoidal quantities, let's say sine of, uh, sine of sine theta one plus sine theta two. So you multiply that by let's say uh, one by root two that uh, you make that cosine 45 into sine theta one, let's say, uh, and uh, And this, uh, okay, so uh, you multiply that by some uh, cosine value, you make that, uh, possibly you make that by, let's say, in any uh, uh, form of uh, sine A plus B or sine cosine A plus B, A minus B, that sort of, you put in some sort of, uh, in some form that way, and you can add the, add the two sine waves, or subtract two sine waves, cosine waves, whatever. Now, we require this sort of addition subtraction because if you consider, let's say, two voltage sources connected in series. So, if they are two, there are two AC voltage sources connected in series, so in that case, uh, both of them can be represented by the by some sort of sine wave. Now, once again, let me repeat here that the frequencies must be same. Uh, what happens if the frequencies are different? So, probably that is beyond the scope of or that actually that is uh, discussed very little in electrical engineering also because usually that does not happen if you consider let's say a uh, generator motor any passive components all of for all of them the frequencies would be uh, the applied frequency excitation and response mostly or usually or almost all the cases the frequencies are same so uh, so uh, So you can add the two voltage uh, voltages. You, are, you require addition of the two voltages. Similarly, if the uh, the uh, the voltage sources are connected in a different way, let's say such that uh, uh, let's say the uh, two voltage sources. Let's say to give you some example, let's say the two voltage sources. If you consider the DC uh, case, let's say the two voltage sources connected in this way, so they should be added up. However, if you consider that uh, let's say the voltage sources are connected in the opposite sense. So uh, let's say this is minus and this is plus. So in that case, we require subtraction of the voltages. Similarly, two currents can be connected. Uh, two branches can be connected in parallel. So in that case, their current should be added up. And uh, if the uh, current through one branch and another branch is uh, flowing in different directions, so in that case, they, you should you have require some method to subtract them. So uh, this can be done using the phasor diagram uh, diagram in an easier way. 
Now, okay. So uh, to do th- usually the phasor representation or phasor diagram is drawn to uh, do these sort of things. Uh, one thing, of course, to represent their phase angle relationship. So if you consider multiple such uh, uh, multiple such uh, sine waves. So let me, for the time being, represent the x one to be let's say the using the this sort of a horizontal line. So. in that case the 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 blue phasor x2 here this should be represented this way okay so of course the the starting of uh, the tail of the two arrows are uh, put at the same point now at any instant of time uh, or you can see here this angle is theta now you consider uh, let's say if you want you can consider the same diagram at a different instant of time so in that case i am drawing a uh, rough figures here so for someone else this may be draw diagram maybe like this and the uh, x2 may be like this so this is x2 and this is x1 let's say and their phase angle difference is theta similarly someone may draw in it another way let's say uh, let go further arbitrary ways so this is x1 this is x2 and their phase angle relationship is theta so all of them are same representation all of them represent x1 uh, the relationship between the sine waves x1 t and x2 t or a, the uh, sine sinusoidal quantity small x1 and small x2 uh, we have the representation now for all of them if you draw or if you consider that uh, they are rotating in the anti clockwise direction so in that case you can all you would always be able to draw the representation of sine waves or the equivalent sine wave <laughs> Okay, so uh, all of them are the same. Uh, I would say representation. It does not make any difference whether uh, you draw first one, figure one, figure two, or figure three. All of them are correct. Okay. Only dif- difference or only important thing is that they should different or they should uh, they uh, the phase angle difference between them should be. Theta, which is the phase angle difference between the x1 and x2, and for the x1, the length of x1 should be proportional to the uh, RMS value of x1, and length of x2 should be proportional to the RMS value of x2. Now, here you can use any scale, uh, whatever scale you want. One is to one, two is to one, three is to one, one is to point, uh, one is uh, two, one is to two, one is to three, whatever scale you want, you can do that. I was if they are of similar quantity let's say x1 and x2 are both are let's say voltages so you have to use same scale uh, if one of them is voltage one of them is current so you you can use any scale for uh, two of them if both of them are current one second you have to use same scale okay now okay so now as long as they are rotating in that at the same frequency of omega both of them so they are phase angle that means the, uh, the at any instant of time the phase angle difference between x1 and x2 will always be a theta so they will, we can always define or we can always find the mathematical expression sinusoidal right, mathematical expression uh, for x1 and x2 okay. further more moreover uh, you can see here if you consider let's say the representation from here to here the rotation is 90 degree and they are uh, let's say for arbitrarily for the time being and if you accept that they represent the same thing so that means if you can see here if x1 is represented uh, by using uh, writing a sin omega t or in figure 2 x1 can be written as cosine omega t in figure 1 so once again that also means that there is no re- uh, difference if you represent some one away from uh, by a sin function and uh, the same way from by a cosine function it all depends upon the uh, starting instant of starting point of the time okay okay 
Now we will discuss further here uh, what is the utility that uh, how to add and subtract. However, I will take a uh, little short route here that uh, hopefully you have. You can see here that uh, they look very similar to the phasor diagram. So lengthwise and every type of definition of them are same. So I will not go into details why this is valid. However, this should be probably evident from when we discuss the uh, mathematical uh, uh, representation of not the sine, sine, cosine, mathematical representation of the phasors. Phasor means they are uh, 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 the term probably uh, look uh, the term probably uh, uh, the pronunciation of the term is very similar to a vector. Phasor means the quantity is defined with respect to time. Vector means the quantity is defined with respect to space. Okay, that is the difference. So, so that there is no point in drawing the axis here. Otherwise, truly speaking, the uh, the relationship or sorry, the uh, the definition of the phasor and vectors are mostly same. So, due to that, you can use the operations for the all sorts of operation, different types of operation applicable for the vector and that are more or less applicable, usually applicable for the phasors also. Now let's say if you want to add x1 and x2, so you can use, okay sorry, you can use the parallelogram law here, so uh, for that you have to draw a line parallel to x1, draw a line parallel to x2, now you can add them up to find the resultant. So this would be the uh, the black line would be the resultant of x1 plus x2. So you can write this, draw, you can consider this as x1 plus x2 this way. Now if you want to, I'm uh, moving back, let's say if you want to do let's say x1 minus x2, so in that case, you first have to draw the negative of x2, let's say somewhere here. Then you have to do the uh, vector addition, uh, sorry, phasor addition. This way. So x1 minus x2 will be somewhere here. So this is minus x2 and this is x1 minus x2. Okay. So this way we can draw, we can uh, add, subtract. Further here you, you can, uh, of course, once again to uh, uh, here you can uh, by the same property, by, you have the same property of the vectors that you can shift the vectors. Uh, you can draw, uh, you can, here we have the advantage that we, you can rotate, that does not make any difference in the definition. Other here you can, if you want, you can shift the vector phases. So let's say this is x1, this should be x2. So if you want, you can do that. And that means the summation of that, you can draw this, you can add them up this way also. Okay, actually, this is the uh, triangular, uh, triangle law of uh, addition. The same thing as that of the, uh, the parallelogram. So this way using the phasor notation or sorry phasor diagram, this is not phasor notation, phasor notation we would learn after this. So this way using phasor diagram you can represent the phase angle relationship. Now remember once again the, as the frequencies of the phase uh, quantities are same, so the phase angle, uh, relation, phase angle between any two quantities would always remain same. So that is the point why you, you are able to, we are able to draw the phasor diagram. If the frequencies are different, so in that case, the, the, uh, the, we can draw the phasor diagram. However, the phase angle between the, any, between the quantities will not remain the same. So there is no point. If you are, of course, draw the phasor diagram, however, there will not be any point here. You, you cannot can apply, apply, you, you can, can apply, apply the addition, addition and subtraction at an instant of time. However, you cannot do that. Uh, and uh, over the, or you can define, you cannot define that over the, uh, over, uh, you cannot define, uh, define that to be a generalized case. Or that would, uh, would, such that that would valid, that would remain valid at any instant of time. Okay. 
so that is the requirement you can do that uh, for several uh, uh, several phasers here so if you have multiple phasers let's say x1 x2 x3 x4 so in that case you first have to add these two then uh, you find the resultant then you add the third one with by using the resultant of the first two then you add the fourth one uh, to the resultant of the first three this way uh, you have to go uh, you have to go on so any confusion regarding the phasor diagram So, no, sir. Okay. so now if you don't have any that's uh, very good so now we can write this rotating phase, rotating line uh, represent this rotating line by using the relationship that is x1 e to the power i theta so at any of course this theta is equals to uh, omega t so let me write here this is i into omega t so by using this euler notation at any instant of time you can find the you can have the complete uh, complete definition that is the uh, i don't know am i audible yes yes yes, yes sir you are hello Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Okay. Ah, uh, that's good. Ah. Uh, Uh, there is a problem with my in that i cannot hear you so actually i am using a different <laughs> laptop so because if you have any question i would not be able to answer anyway i will find the problem uh, with this uh, after this class i try to find okay so, so we can uh, you can we can find the uh, complete re release a complete definition that means uh, you can consider the sine case consider the cosine case whatever however you have all the information here okay so we can consider this to be the because this represents the line also so and we have all the information we can consider this to be the representation of the sin x1 quantity now the issue here is that if you consider this e to the power i omega t of course this is all a notation we cannot do anything here or the issue is that i already have a meaning in electrical engineering so uh, in electrical engineering i means current of course you would say that why we can represent uh, current by in a different way i would say is that this uh, predates or uh, this uh, uh, the representation of the current by i that has a uh, longer history compared to all these uh, these all these things so uh, electrical engineers don't do not want to change because you would find uh, in st while studying engineering that you cannot represent by a quantity by any uh, letter you want you have to represent it say voltage by some sort of v capital v small v uh, that can be italics v volt v something any way you should represent by something a, uh, either volt v something v subscript something or there should be some sort of v there to represent the voltage similarly current is usually represented by i okay so uh, so to remove that problem instead of using i we define the same thing by using j rest of the things remain completely same all the definitions that i means 90 degree anti clockwise rotation if you multiply some quantity in complex plane by using i by i then that rotates the 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 quantity rotates by 90 degree anti in anti clockwise direction so that definition is completely valid everything about i remains i 
uh, square equals to minus one. Here also j square equals to minus one. Everything is same. Only difference or only di difference is in terms of the uh, letter. That's all. And okay. that's all. Okay. So uh, this is equals to this. Now. Usually the complete definition now that means if we define this way, so x2 should be defined by x2 e to the power j. If you look here, x2 is lagging by theta, so this should be omega t minus of theta. So now that also means if you go by let's say that uh, so this uh, by using this you can. Uh, find, you you, uh, you can find that x1 is leading and x2 is leading, lagging because there is a minus theta here. Okay. So you can find from the representation of the sine wave. Now someone can also write, let's say x2, okay, let me use a different color. If you write x2 or represent x2 by x2 e to the power j omega t, so in that case you have to use x1 okay. <coughs> x1 can be should be defined as e to the power j omega t plus theta okay. does not make any difference so here also you can find that here by using this uh, uh, let me write this these two that x2 is lagging by using this you can say x1 is leading Although they make they they means they uh, may actually mean the same thing that x one is uh, x two is lagging means x one is leading or x one is leading means x one x two is uh, of course you should not say x one is leading simply x one is leading whom you have to complete this x one is leading x two so that means x two is lagging x one okay now uh, I forgot to mention this can be uh, seen from the phasor diagram also. So, if you consider the phasor diagram here, uh, because I have drawn several things here, let me repeat here that let's say this is x1 and x2, that is like this. Okay. So, and the phase angle difference between these two is let's say theta. So, here uh, you can see here that x1 is leading x2. Now, how to find that? Uh, or uh, how can we know that? So to know that, because remember that all of these are rotating in anti-clockwise direction. Now let's say how to find that which one is leading and which one is lagging from the phasor node phasor diagram. You consider that you are looking for the looking or keeping an eye over the the phasors. Let's say you are looking here, like this. So you would find that. If they are rotating in anti-clockwise direction, all of you would find first x1, then x2. So that means x1 would achieve the same phase because you are looking at an at a fixed position. So you would look at, look at the same phase of, of the two. So x1 would achieve the same phase at an earlier instant of time compared to x2. So that means x1 is leading and come x2, x2, or x1 is leading, x2 is lagging. So that way you can find. Now you would see, sir, what would happen? Let's say I don't know what there is no absolute position. So I may be looking at this point. Okay. So you would find that x1 uh, that x2 is leading and x1 is lagging. However, that is not the case because x1 is leading and x2 is lagging. So that is the true case. So that becomes ambiguous. No, as such, no. So here you have to uh, find at least two rotations. Why two rotations? In any case, you have to find two rotations. Why? Because if you consider here, you would of course find x2, then you would find x1, then if you wait a little bit, you would find x2 once again. Now you find what is the time taken for this? You would find from x2 to x1, this time is much, is much greater than from x1 to x2. I hope you got my point. Uh, okay. You would find that uh, X1 has uh, okay. Okay. 
so you would find that uh, x1 okay uh, you would first find x2 then you would find x1 coming then once again if you wait you would find x2 is coming now this uh, change from x x2 to x1 the time taken that would be much greater compared to the time taken for x1 to x2 so that means the angle between if you consider consider the angle from x2 to x1 that angle is much greater so this angle uh, i am talking about this angle this angle is greater than the angle theta now our definition of the angle we go by usually we go by the acute angle that means in this this case the smaller angle so that means this uh, this by using our definition the or uh, the actual or the true uh, representation or true consideration would be as you look for the x1 and then x2 or you find which one takes lower amount of time which passage requires lower amount of time or which which one is the lower angle between these two so that would give you or uh, that that way you can you would be able to find which one is leading and which one is lagging okay unfortunately i cannot hear you if you have any question uh, you please write on in the chat box i would try to answer otherwise uh, let me uh, uh, rectify this issue with this sound uh, for the timing uh, then we will discuss in the next class if you have any question here uh, that can we can discuss you can write in the chat box otherwise we would of course discuss in the next class how to use books <laughs> you would have the same sort of information uh, in a in a uh, i would say different way in books that's all and of course you have to solve a few problems uh, you get your fundamental right these are all fundamentals of electrical engineering ac yes what if the angle is 180 degree if the angle is 180 degree there is no question of leading and lagging so you can consider any one of them to be leading any one of them to be lagging good point you go through any book in theresa book uh, you would find several uh, um, numerical problems there uh, example problems the uh, exercise problems uh, otherwise you can follow any book theresa book i uh, i do not not prefer i would say i would say uh, i advise because there are so many pro several problems numerical problems there Hughes is a very good book. Uh, if you want to clear your fundamental, that is probably one of the best books uh, in the market. So uh, I would always recommend. However, that is a big book because uh, this is uh, although in your first year there is all uh, these sorts of subjects are there. However, if you want to go into electrical engineering, let's say understand something, then this is a uh, one of the best books. However, you would not find uh, many problems there. You would find uh, lit, uh, very small or little problems, very uh, low number of problems compared to Theresa. Okay, so sorry for this. Uh, uh, okay, so we would uh, meet in the next class. I will. exam specific <laughs> in exam you would have everything means you would have uh, numerical problems you would have uh, theoretical problems that mean your understanding will understanding should be tested so everything would be there you uh, unfortunately the uh, i or we would not make the questions uh, for you because the problem is that Uh, the question would be same for all first year students uh, means under the common curriculum so the question would be found by a coordinator although uh, so we would not have any information about the question so you should follow the uh, the last year's question usually the questions are not that uh, 
I should not say at, uh, from sitting in this chair uh, on the, the questions. Uh, the, uh, if you study, uh, if you have good understanding, then it would not be difficult. Means I'm not saying that uh, bad understanding or uh, you would be able to pass easily. I I have no doubt. You just follow class and practice. Ah, uh, yes, that should be so. Uh, that should be so. Otherwise, there is no point in doing all these exercises. So, <laughs> it would be enough if you follow the class. If you clarify your doubts and you try to uh, solve the problems, uh, uh, if any, uh, if you have any difficulty, then we can discuss about the problems also. There is no issue. There is a practicing problems, of course. I would say uh, if you find time, you can do, you should do that uh, because problems uh, that gives some ideas. Uh, solving problems also, uh, you sometimes you have to go back to your theories to get the uh, basics uh, clarified for solving the problem. So that way, that is a good thing. And uh, further, you have would have some numerical problems, maybe some basic numerical problems in the exam. So that would help, of course. In Hughes' book, you would find a uh, low man means there would not be much problems, uh, numerical problems. I forgot about the exercise, uh, uh, how much numerical problems are there. Uh, from the fundamental theoretical point of view, that, that is a good, uh, very good book. And if, uh, if you can go through Cotton book, that is further better, I would say. However, you would find little problems there, numerical problems there. Okay, so we would meet in the next class. If you have any question regarding the, we would of course move forward. If you have any question regarding the uh, this phasor diagram, phasor notation, we would of course discuss in the next class. So thank you. Have a good day.